God still works miracles today. When we give our lives to Christ, we become part of a large community and family. God never intended for us to be little private independent units working all alone. We are to be a collective body made up of many members working together in unity to exhort, encourage, and spread the gospel. This unity should also influence the way we pray. Writing to Brother and Sister Farnsworth on the topic of united prayer, Ellen White stated, We are encouraged to pray for success with the divine assurance that our prayers will be heard and answered. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 19 and 20. The promise is made on condition that the united prayers of the church are offered. And in answer to these prayers, there may be expected a power greater than that which comes in answer to private prayer. The power given will be proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and for one another. Referring again to Matthew 18, 19, 20, Ellen White exclaims, Precious promise! Do we believe it? What marvelous results would appear if the united prayers of this company were to ascend to God in living faith. Let me share an amazing story of what happened not too long ago in Vietnam. After experiencing the joy of God in their own lives, lay Pastor Han and his house church members were convicted to fast and pray specifically for the unreached villages in Vietnam. They began by focusing their prayers on a village 150 miles away a village where not one Christian lived. They chose this village because it was the hometown of one of the couples in their group. This couple, the Wins, had unconverted relatives in this village who they longed to win for the Lord. So Pastor Han, the Wins, and the house church members began to pray. Not long after, the aunt of the Wins, a lady named Yen, who was suffering from terminal stomach cancer, came to their city seeking medical care. Her nephew, Mr. Win, invited Yen to Pastor Han's house church, where they attended each Sabbath. She came, and there she heard of Jesus Christ and was given her own Bible. Yen eagerly accepted Christ as her Savior, and everyone rejoiced, especially Mr. and Mrs. Win. However, because Yen was in the last stages of cancer, the doctors offered her no help. Her only hope was in the master healer, and so the house church members began praying fervently for a miracle. The cancer made it impossible for Yen to keep food down, but her insatiable appetite for the Word of God sustained her. After two weeks in the city, she returned home to her family in the village, but her condition worsened. About one month later, Yen's sister-in-law called Pastor Han with the sad news that Yen was about to die. The Wins, along with their house church family, had been continuing to pray for Yen, as well as for her village. But when they heard this news, they immediately gathered to pray earnestly that God would intervene. They prayed intensely for two hours, claiming Psalms 30 for her life. They reasoned with God, asking Him, if you let Yen die, who will praise your name in this village? At the close of their prayer, they felt peace and assurance that God would heal her. After another season of united prayer the next day, Pastor Han called to see if Yen's health had improved. He discovered she was in an unconscious state and was barely holding on to life. Talking to Yen's sister-in-law, an unbeliever, he pled with her earnestly, Do you love Yen? If you do, Listen to me. We have been praying that God would heal Yen. He is the only one who can help her now. Please go get Yen's book called the Bible. Open it to Psalms 30. Kneel down beside Yen and read the words, putting Yen's name in the verses. God is able to heal and restore her, he persisted. There was silence on the other end of the phone line. When Pastor Han hung up the phone, he was not sure if Yen's sister-in-law would do what he asked. But the group continued to join together in united prayer, trusting in the Lord. A few days later, 
Pastahan, along with the winds, went to visit the village. They were met with shouts of joy from a fully restored Yan, from her sister-in-law, and from a host of former unbelievers, all praising the Lord. Not long after Pastahan called, Yan stopped breathing. Her sister-in-law reported, I had already cleaned her up and was preparing to dress her body for burial when I remembered what Pastor Han had said to me on the phone. Turning to Pastor Han, she continued excitedly, I had no hope left other than your plan. After I did what you said, Yen started to move inside the blankets she was wrapped in. I stared in amazement and fear as she started vigorously kicking the blankets off, trying to free herself. She then sat up. I couldn't believe it, because she had not sat up in two weeks. She asked for some food, which she kept down. It's a true miracle. Yen had not only come back to life, but she had also been completely healed. With this new open door, Pastor Han and the winds, as well as others in the house church, began reaching out to the village, sharing about the loving author of life and his powerful words in the Bible. Over 50 people have already accepted Christ, and the news of the miracle and of God's love is spreading to other unreached villages in the area. Would this miracle have happened if the believers in this small house church in the city hadn't been willing to fast and unite in prayer for this village? What would happen if we would follow the example of our Vietnamese brothers and sisters in praying for the unreached in our communities and in our areas of influence.